Right until the final moment. In the corner for the win. Oh! These are new beginnings. Time to raise the standard. Be better than the best. McKenzie. Oh, beautiful. Ten teams, one goal. Become the champion. You know, and it's playoff champions. Let's see this in two decades. A new era, a fresh start, a total reset. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are basketball. We are British basketball. Can't stop me, I'm unbeatable, I'm unbeatable, I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. I'm unbeatable. Every time you want to clash, the wind is kicking through the door. I am unbeatable. Chance is running out of stock, and we're running out the clock. I fail once, never stop. I am unbeatable. I am unbeatable. Good evening and welcome to the British Basketball League. It's the first week of competition and we have a heavyweight matchup as the Cheshire Phoenix are on the road at last season's league runners-up, Leicester Riders. The Riders have an incredible record of winning their opening games of the season. 11 straight wins between 2011 and 2021. To take you through this one is Dan Routledge and Ant Rowe. Thank you very much, Jeanette. Here's a man who was part of many of those opening day wins and a very new look Leicester roster, though. We don't see this very often. Rob Padanostro with almost a complete rebuild. Well, this is a team we're accustomed to retaining around 80% of the roster from the previous year. This year, the rules are out the window. Only three returning players, a lot of newness there, but you've still got that staple pillar in coach Rob Padanostro. At the other end of the floor, pretty new lineup as well for uh, Ben Thomas and his Cheshire Phoenix team. Yeah, very different. And Ben Thomas, an excellent recruiter. We've seen him bringing some gems into this league. He's gone a little bit more defensive oriented this year. He's got some long, quick athletic guards that will be hoping to disrupt the opposing offensive team. Well, we'll get to see how well they do disrupt the opposing team. These were the two teams arriving a little bit earlier today and it's always an exciting time first day of the season you've been through pre-season you've run all the sprints now you get to do it for real this was always one of the most exciting times of the year it's like the first day at big school again you know all teams again are not you know stuck to a record the, the optimism's high the, the, the slate is clean team's got that positive vibe. Well, that's the thing. Everybody's got that belief going into the first game of the season. But we've talked about the fact there are new players on the roster. Let's have a look at a couple of guys that you've pulled out, starting with one of Light Rider's new signings, Xavier Pinson. High hopes for him. I don't want to say it too early, but he's been likened to Gino Crando, two-time MVP for the Leicester Riders previously. He's a quick athletic guard, very exciting. And he's played at high caliber D1 uh, outfits, one of which is LSU and if you're familiar with Shaquille O'Neal he also attended LSU and for your modern day fans Ben Simmons so you're talking about a player playing on the top stage there in the American basketball system well let's see how that translates into the British Basketball League but one guy we know can play at this level Kimball McKenzie just gets better every time you see him and I think his role is going to be even more so important this year because he's one of those consistent pillars for coach Paternostro he was excellent last year 12 points a game and his performances were so competitive that it gave him a Team GB call up and this won't be good news for the Phoenix fans. His team high, 31 points last year, season high was against the Phoenix. Well, he is a guy that can really step up an occasion. That game at Cheshire, as you said, tremendous. But speaking of guys who can step up, here is one moving up a division. Tremendous in the NBA last year. Can that translate to the British Basketball League? This is an interesting one for me because we see, uh, I think, a lot more um, bad news stories from players coming up from Division 1 to the British Basketball League. But now we've got Aaron Roy, who dominated last year. His numbers are incredible. 24 points a game, 11 rebounds, 5.5 assists. He did it on the best team as well. 26 and out. It was an immaculate performance. So surely this guy can transition his success into the British Basketball League. Well, that was, as I say, he didn't lose a game last 
last year. Cheshire fans will be hoping he has a lot of wins with them. But another guy, Le Quincy Rideau, that you've really liked the look of in pre-season. Yeah, I saw him play against Division One Loughborough University. I thought he was excellent. You know, good basketball IQ. And what's particularly, I think, important with this player is that he went to South Florida University and he backed Defensive Player of the Year in the American Atlantic Conference. No easy feat. So he's a defense-oriented guard. Well, it promises to be a fascinating contest. We're a few minutes away from tip-off. Join us right after the break. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena in Leicester. We're a few moments away from tip-off. Let's have a look at the starting fives for today's game, starting with the Leicester Riders and no fewer than four debutants in the starting five. Josh McKenzie returning from last year in this opening lineup. He was so great last year as well in the starting five. The other end of the floor, Cheshire Phoenix, Ben Thomas. He gives three debuts to his uh, team in their starting five. Maceo Jack, a returner from last year, and Skylar White, who was with Surrey a couple of years ago. Well, earlier, I caught up with both coaches to see how they're feeling ahead of the game. Well, Rob, uh, slightly unusual for you in recent years. A lot of new faces on the roster. How have you been pulling the team together? It's been a fun preseason. You know, it's been great to watch these guys compete every day. Their energy is infectious. These guys have got to get to know each other off the court. They've got to be able to trust each other um, whilst playing hard. And, and, you know, all those little things that we're trying to do away from basketball is only going to strengthen that bond. Well, we have a lot of depth. I mean, we're still missing Caleb Asbury, but we have a lot of depth, so we will play a lot of players. And, you know, so far in the preseason, we've been pretty tough in transition. You know, our fast break ability has been on display. So we're trying to be a complete team. We're trying to be able to play many different ways. But, um, you know, so far we've been a team that can really get out on a break. One of the toughest, obviously, Leicester. We all know how good they are. I know last year they were second in a couple of the competition. Uh, yeah, anytime you uh, have an opening night, no matter what sport you're in, no matter how long, you get excited, hard to sleep. The night before, uh, palms are sweaty. But, um, but yeah, I look forward to uh, when the ball goes up. I think these are the tricky times right before, but when the ball goes up, I'll be ready to go.
Well, here we go then, the two fives walking out onto court, ready to get us going for this British Basketball League game between the Leicester Riders and Rob Padanostro and the Cheshire Phoenix against Ben Thomas and the Riders. Fortunate enough to be at home opening game, but they do usually win their opening game and they'll be hoping for a little more of that. The ball is up and we are underway as the Riders will get the opening offense through Kimball McKenzie. Looking down low to Bridges. He's got some great footwork, and there he's shown the hands as well. Really good play there. They were patient. They got the ball down low to their big man. Six for 11. Bridges there. Nice baseline hook shot. Here's Right, putting it on the floor, getting all the way to the basket. No help defense whatsoever, easy laying. Wow, look too easy, the concerns there. No help side defense, as you mentioned there, Dan, but Rai slicing his way to the basket with ease. McKenzie with his trademark pull up off the mark. Yeah. Referees for this evening, Kate Unsworth, Steve Ferris, and Tom Muddiman. Yeah. Here's Rai again, looking to Again, attack the basket, this time forced out. White fires up the three, back iron. Well, that's what Skyler White's going to want to do. He's going to put up threes and he want to put up good numbers of volume as well. So Ryder's going to have to honor that and contest shots quickly. Holmes taking it to the basket. Just looking at the official on the baseline, see if a foul might be coming his way. Didn't get the call. Might well have been some arm contact in there. McKenzie, they run that out of bounds play for him so often, but he doesn't knock it down this time. The pass is picked off by Holmes. He'll run it all the way back himself. He's very much a north south guard. A touch of Larry Austin the way he attacks the rim. 100%. That's a great comparison to Larry Austin Jr. of last year, the Cheshire Phoenix. Now with Newcastle, Jaron Holmes, throughout preseason, he's been that guy. The guy who's always looking to attack, doesn't really settle for the easy jump shot, always looking to get to the rim. Well, looking to get his first points in a rider's uniform from the free throw line. Last, uh, last year, we're an excellent free throw shooting team. I know it's something Rob Paternostro, as you'll know better than I, spends a lot of time on with his teams in practice. He does, it's more so negative reinforcement. If you miss, you're running. <laughs> I remember, and I don't miss those days. Elbow line shoot. shot was, was your shot, man. It was. Free throws, completely different mentality. Here's Stevens for the next. Back to White. Head fake on the three. Resets himself. Skyler White knocks down the triple. It's an excellent play there. He sets the pick, and instead of rolling, he flares, and that pump fake gets the defender in the air. Mistake by McKenzie. Well, it should have been an easy two points, but Cheshire blow the first one. Second attempt is laid in by Jack. Wow, good activity there from the Phoenix. Didn't convert, as you say, Riddle should have converted that one. Double mistake from Leicester because stepped over the line on the inbound, so which is a violation. You don't see that very often. But Rob Padanostro, before the game, was talking about not turning the ball over. There's two of them in a row. Oh, dear. Without even getting the ball outside of the three-point line. A lack of communication early from the Riders. That's an unforced error. Here's Thomas trying to find some room off one foot, leaves it short. Offensive rebound, forced home by Bridges. Well, really interesting to see what they're going to be able to do to try and neutralize Bridges because he's six foot 11. He's clearly the biggest, strongest player on court. Let's see if the riders go to, to him early. Well, they've left Jack, and we saw last year what a good three point shooter he can be. That came off the hands of Bridges and will be. A Cheshire ball. Oh, miscommunication there. Twice in that one play, the miscommunication not to locate Maceo Jack, but then also on the rebound, you've got two players not communicating, knocking the ball out of bounds. Well, again, White. Skyler White's not going to die wondering, is he? That's his third three of the game. He's knocked down two of them. Goodness me, Ryder's defense has to adjust. They're going to have to adjust quickly, or Skyler White's going to shoot his team into a healthy lead. 
Well, along with the sloppy uh, pass there, turning the ball over. Leicester coughing it up big time here in the early stages. Three turnovers inside the first three minutes. That's good help from McKenzie to deny the first shot. And the second one is blocked as well by Bridges. But it comes out to right for three. And this time it'll be a Leicester possession. Why does it got away with one again there? And you know, we know the impressive stat line of Rye, 24 points a game, and it was 46% from the three-point line. That's it's video game numbers. That's remarkable percentage, regardless of what league you play in. So Rye's another guy that they're gonna have to locate for beyond the three-point line. Well, they don't move the three-point line just because you change divisions. It's the same distance wherever you go. McKenzie driving in can't convert. little hesitation and then taking it to the basket is Stevens. Wow, that's a nice move from Stevens. You see that change of pace and what that did is it got him that space in between him and the defender. Nice finish. Low. Thomas looking to bully his way to the basket. Nice footwork to get to the ring. Really nice move there. The use of that pump fake and then step through and finish. Encouraging start there for Thomas. White. Oh, he's got his man up in the air a couple of times there. Certainly grabbed the attention of Bridges with them first couple of threes. Kicked down for another three. That was a long way short from Rido. Low looking to attack. Gets the bump, but can't finish off the glass. Smart play, though, from Lau, though. He didn't wait for the defense to set up. He attacked straight away, and as a result, gets the defender to commit the foul. Well, it's a high-scoring start here, and uh, it'll be interesting to see which coach makes the first move. No changes as yet in the game. Well, Padanostro, traditionally, you see that rotation start to come in at about the midpoint of the opening quarter. He's obviously got a lot of players to work with this year. Well, makes both from the free throw line, and it's a two-point game. Well, that was one of Coach Ben Thomas' worries, wasn't it, before the game? He commented on the depth of the Leicester Riders and how his team were going to be able to deal with that wave after wave of quality coming off the bench. Rido directly in traffic. On to Rye. Around the screen. Bumped by Holmes. And he will be called for his first foul. Well, some debate from the Cheshire side of the ball as to whether he was in his shooting motion. Referees say it's going to be from the end line. The pass is deflected away and out of bounds, so White will get it from the side with 11 on the shot clock. Well, you see what they're trying to do there. They're trying to drag the defender. Macy Jack had two on him there, which left Skyler White open for a split second. Well, that's a quick inbound, and they found the open shooter. Great play from the Phoenix to get a three for Stevens. Wow, and that's what he likes to do, EJ Stevens. 38% three-point shooter in college. Here's Thomas. Trying to find some room. There really isn't much there. And that one is tipped out of bounds. It is Leicester Riders 10, Cheshire Phoenix 15. We are mid.
Welcome back to the Morningside Arena. Leicester ball from the end. And that is their first three-point attempt of the game, and they knock it down. Cheshire already hit three at the other end. Well, and it takes one of the substitutes to come off the bench and, and provide instant offense already. Samuel Adubu, much injured last year, intermittent spell, comes in and makes his mark immediately. Is Leicester in transition, and Thomas with the two-handed throwdown. Wow, one shot can turn your fortunes around, and Leicester right as a quick five points. Well, it didn't take long for Ben Thomas to want to bring an end to that run. As you say, it's just two shots, it's just 30 seconds, but he's suddenly gone, hang on a minute, Leicester have got a bit of momentum, and, and he wants to talk things over. Sometimes as well, when you've got a new team, it's for the coach to find those five, find the five that's going to change the, the energy. And look at this, simple pass out of bounds. Samuel <laughs> Dubus has time to check his feet. Lines is shut up and knocks it down. And I guess it is one of those things, if you're going to forgive anybody on the scout report, it's on his first possession in the first game, they just completely lost him. And then in transition, transition suddenly left to tie the game up at 15 points apiece. I don't know, Dan, you're being too kind. I think <laughs> Coach Ben and Thomas will be fuming with that. It was a simple pass there out of bounds and you know, defense just switched off. and. What you've got as a result, you've got a very confident Leicester Riders team feeling pretty good about themselves now. Well, that was the thing. They were a little bit disjointed, you would say, in the first few minutes of the game. They had those back-to-back -back turnovers. They weren't uh, getting any open three-point looks at all. They, that was their first three-point uh, attempt. And, and, you know, sometimes it's one shot and it feeds across the team. That's exactly it, it's contagious and it works both ways, you know, when players are missing shots and you often see that when one player is missing free throws, it has that negative effect on everyone else, but it's the same way for when you're making shots, it can sometimes inject confidence throughout the team. Well, Rob Padanastro does like to throw a little zone press at teams, I'm sure we'll see a lot of it this year given the depth he's got to allow his guys to work hard for a few minutes and then get a blow. Really through for the mitts right here. Now Stevens gets an open look at the top of the key. That is batted down. And judging by Holmes's response, he thought that came off him, and it was indeed a next ball. Yeah, they've had a couple of those now, haven't they? Where they've bubbled off the hands of the defenders trying to rebound the ball. They've got to get up there and secure that basketball. Well, with the pass, setting the screen for. Rideau turns the corner, drives to the basket, and is fouled by TJ Lowell. We'll go to the line for two. That's a great move from the Quincy Rideau, and you can see the disappointment on his face. I think he should have finished that. He's had a couple now where he's missed inside. I mean, the good news is he's creating for himself to get in those danger positions, but this is one where you'd want to finish that one. It's an and one celebration. And ben Thomas. With a few words, not quite sure what his hire is about here. I think there might be a little chatter along the uh, sideline between the two coaches. Won't be the first time. They get on really well in between the games, I think that's fair to say, but when the battle lines are drawn. And what could have been a three-point play might only be worth one now. And that's the thing, and that could have the impact of not being able to finish the initial shot. It's not even worth one, but they do get an offensive rebound out of it, the Knicks. They have crashed the glass hard, and they get some points at it. We talked about just a moment ago uh, the fact that they were forcing Leicester to knock it out of bounds as well as going after the offense. Yeah, good activity from the Phoenix so far, and these second chance opportunities they're creating for themselves is getting them to... Duo with the three, and he gets uh, a foul as well, chance of a four-point play. Wow, what an impact <laughs> he's had since being introduced into this game again. Wow, 
As soon as he catches it, he lines himself up. The defense reacted quicker this time, but it wasn't enough with the contact. And one. Well, that is very much a point of emphasis this year. It's something in the meetings that they have between the referees and the coaches in the offseason. They highlighted is those closeout fouls. So it is something I think we will see a bit more of over the course of this British Basketball League season because they are looking for it like that. Defenders have to react, and that is too easy. It's happened a couple of times. And this time it's Christian getting all the way to the basket. No rotation from Leicester's defense. No, Kabul. Baskets there from Christian. So again, you, you're going to find periods now in this game where individuals are going to find their stride and increase in confidence and, and put points on the board. Holmes up in the air, pins it at the top, and his first bucket of the game is a three. Wow, Xavier Pinson had a lot of time to think about that one. It was measured and it looked like a comfortable three-point shot. Oh, missed a couple of games in the preseason through injury. They're obviously still without Caleb Asprey as well, who's uh, who was out warming up before the game. So maybe his return is not too far away. But that's why you have the depth to deal with these issues. Shot clock getting low here, needs to go up. Time running out, gets it away just in time, doesn't hear anything. Leicester with the rebound. Well, Holmes should have just hung on to it there, and it would have been a shot clock violation. Instead, he turns it over. Wow. Well, it's good activity, though, from the Phoenix. It was an error, of course, by the Riders, but Cheshire Phoenix in that full court, they put a bit more pressure. And they're getting. Riders to commit the turnovers. Holmes driving in. Thomas with the offensive rebounds right away from him. Ooh, that's a hard foul. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike foul. Bowman landed down on him and sort of grabbed at him. And that's another point of emphasis this year. You can see as he comes down, he's just got, he's just grabbing him. It's a definite unsportsmanlike foul. Yeah, yeah, good, good call from the referee there, and a part of it as well, when you jump that high, you're off balance, and you know, part of it is sometimes self-preservation for Bowman, he doesn't want to fall on his head, so he's just grappling whatever he can before he hits the deck. But a nice pump fake, and you know, a good transition off the, you know, very quick, strong hands of the Phoenix, you know, it's, again, it's another one of those turnovers to the Riders, and Phoenix are prospering down the other end of the floor. Continues that momentum, or lack thereof. Oh, wow. You were talking about running sprints uh, on missed free throws. I think the Knicks might have to be running some sprints in practice this week. 0 for 4 from the line. To Jack and back out to Holden. Shot clock ticking down. Kick right open, wide open again in the corner. Washington trying to get the rebound, but another offensive rebound from the Knicks, their eighth of the game. Excellent de deflection there from Maceo Jack. And again, the kick to the corner. They've got so many open threes, the Knicks, and knock down that one. Wow, it's Kristen again with. Another bucket. It's a big one. Nine points for him off the bench. Here's Bowman. Do we again given the room? And they can't sack off him. He's just hitting them for fun. Wow, the two highest players come off the pinch so far. Do we? And Kristen just firing on all cylinders. Do is three for three. Pinson's got the other one for Leicester. They both made four. Knicks have missed seven. That's going to be a foul as well as uh, Chagua drives to the basket. He's an interesting player, Ethan Chagua. He's six foot nine, he's long, but you can see he's versatile. He likes to put the ball on the floor. He's not your traditional big man, is what you would call a traditional big man. So what I mean by that is you're, you're, you're back to the basket player. Much like we've seen Braylon Bridges 
what you'll see from Jaguar is a little bit more action from the perimeter, putting the ball on the floor and getting to the hole like he did on that last play. Another offensive rebounds, Jack this time. Oh, the blunt so many layups though. They could be further ahead here. They have. It's great job to steal the offensive rebound, but you've got to finish the play there. And if this is a close game, the Phoenix will be looking at this game tape thinking, what could have been? Vincent rocking and rolling, getting into the key, trying to finish. Unable to do so. Jack has it the other way. And he's told by his coach to slow down. The shot clock is switched off. So the Knicks looking to extend this one-point lead going in to the first quarter break. Couple around the, uh, uh, right, sorry, around the screen, kicks to the corner and Holden, and he strings the three. And that will do it for the opening quarter here at the Morningside Arena. And it's the Cheshire Phoenix who lead we're through 10 minutes here, 24 points to 28. The next lead will be right back after this break. Welcome back to Leicester, where Cheshire will start us for the second quarter. Four-point lead, perhaps could and should be more for Cheshire, the way they've got the uh, opening uh, quarter to go. They've got so many good looks. They've got to the basket a lot. They, they probably missed, left a few points out there. Yeah, they've missed a lot in and around the key there. But what they are doing is they're shooting a healthy three-point percentage, 41% at the moment, and that's why they're winning the game. Mo Walker into the game for the first time for Leicester. Interesting to see how Cheshire deal with him. He causes a lot. That's how you deal with him. Come with the help side, right with the steal and the pass down court. And Cheshire turned defense into offense with Kristen into double figures now. Incredible play there from Aaron Roy. You can see him go across the baseline. Great anticipation with the steal and a beautiful outlet pass. Low. To the mid range. I think that was blocked, was it? Well, there was a foul court actually. It certainly hit the top of the board, which suggested something had happened. Well, usually a shooter of that caliber, someone's, someone's affected the mechanics there because that was a wayward miss there. Wow. Again, that was another landing space foul, I think. So 
So TJ Lowell will go to the free throw line. He was two of two on his first trip. Lester currently four of five from this distance. That one wipes his feet, but it does drop. TJ Lowell played over in Canada with now teammate Kimball McKenzie. So there's some continuity and those two playing together historically. Well, that one didn't wipe his feet, but he was able to get in there and uh, draw the rebound and get the foul. So he'll go to the line once again. Well, it's this time the Riders giving Phoenix a taste of their own medicine, crashing the board. He was first to react. Well, that is Leicester's fifth offensive rebound. Cheshire at the other end of the floor have eight. Wow. It's actually even at both ends of the floor in terms of offense versus defense on the rebounds. Two again. Again, Leicester with this uh, familiar zone press. There's Ryan. McKenzie on his back, looking to back him down, trying to spin. Spins into trouble. McKenzie did well. Did very well there, Roy. Got the size on Kimball McKenzie. Taking it right at the basket, as we have seen him do over his uh, two years in the British Basketball League. He's very direct, and you can see he was on the he was almost on the trip. Rye was going down anyway, but then his legs collided with McKenzie, and Kimball McKenzie will go to the free throw line. He was the number one free throw shooter in the league last season. Very rare. 90 plus percent foul shooter. He's actually on pace to be the all time leading free throw shooter uh, uh, in the British Basketball League. He currently has the best percentage, but he hasn't taken enough yet. He will before this season is out. Uh, so if he continues at the clip he's going, he'll move to number one all time. Well, such an asset to have a player like him, knowing that. When he goes on the line, it's almost guaranteed yeah. baskets. Here's Jack. Ball comes back up top to Holden. Holden penetrates, kicks, extra pass to White. White up in the air, didn't quite know what to do with it. Threw it to the corner and hoped somebody would get there. Well, you see how much attention Scholar, what attracts two players go to him instantly. They just wasn't able to find that open man. And turns it over. He hit a couple of early threes. I don't remind everybody what's on the scout. Here's Pinson looking for his second three. Bowman keeping it alive for Leicester. Walker with the head fake. Pinson will stop and go again. Straight to the basket. Wow, I was going to comment it was over dribbling, but that was so creative. Every dribble was towards the basket, and then a strong finish to level it up at 30 apiece. We go on to Jack. Jack sees a lane, and he fills it, but misses the layup again. They've missed a few of them. Here's McKenzie. He goes straight to the rim, and he makes no mistake. Nice play, Kimball McKenzie, getting in the danger areas. Absorbs the contact, and this time he's focused and accurate enough to finish the play. with the last seven points of the game. You can see Cheshire have a lot more shots, partly because of the offensive rebound, partly because Leicester have got to the free throw line. Eight nothing in the last 142. White trying to do something about that. Well, you commented down those early made shots from Skyler White. You saw a very nervous defender jump out there a little bit too aggressively and deem too much contact, so Scarlett White will get an opportunity here to, to make three free throws. Well, they're having a mare, aren't they, from the free throw line? One for seven now. Goodness me, it's that... Sometimes it's that mental contagious that's affecting the whole team, even the guys that are 
been brought into this team to shoot the ball. Skylar White, the prime example of a pure shooter. He's missed two out of three. There's almost another turnover on the rebound. Here's McKenzie, quick down court. And he was just the fastest to react. Wow, that's the danger of Lester Rodgers. Yes, it is. Court against Rideau. Pinson getting his body in the way. Uh, that phone court pressure from Pinson. You can see a little bit of verbal exchange from the two players as well. And this is what you is quite interesting in the narrative of the season. You're going to start seeing these individual rivalries develop over the course of the season. Particularly with the new guys who've come in. You start to learn which one's like a conversation along the way. Pinson looks like he might fall into that category. <laughs> Here he is. Walker offers the screen, goes the other way. Pass not quite on the money to Holmes. Holmes backing down, tosses it up. Maybe could have found Walker there. It wasn't a great offense, lack of movement there, over dribbling the basketball. White fires up another three, not this time. But there is Rye on the offensive glass. There's a reason he was double figures in rebounds last year. Wow, it's a good play. He's such an unorthodox player. He's uh, in between a guard and a forward. He's got good size and strength. It's a nice play from him there. Benson turning the corner, out to Bowman for three, a little short. Just a four or five from the three-point line before that attempt. Here's White. He's not seen a shot he didn't like the look of yet today. A little hesitation from Bowman. Walker now going to fire up the three, and he strings it. Goodness, man, man, we've seen Mo Walker huddles up a few and far between, but he's someone I think who likes to shoot that long-range ball. Well, he's only took 32. He averages about one every other game in his BBL career, but he shoots at nearly 42%, so you'll take that any day of the week. Here's White, and he replies with three of his own. Goodness, man, it's raining threes, and... Scarlet White there just gets a little bit too much space. Mo Walker's going to have to figure out a way here to contain him on the perimeter. Oh, no. oh, he's going to let another one fly there. Berman spinning into the lane, trying to find some room. He's crafty, and he's off the glass. He's done really well there, and I'm really excited for this season for Blake Berman. We've seen him have increasing in his ability every single year. And he was a player that came from NBL Division One as well, averaging just under 20 points a game in Division One. <laughs> There's a guy who averaged a couple more than that, knocking down his three. Scout report must be underlined. Do not let him shoot the open three. 46% last season from the three-point line. His first in the British Basketball League. Here's Bowman with the mid-range. Blake Bowman. Cannot speak high more highly of him. Off the bench, he's contributing already, and he will be one of the more experienced players, more experienced BBL players in the roster this year. Here's Skyler White again from behind the arc. He's unconscious. Wow. Skyler White doesn't have any other thing but the shoot button. Four of uh, seven from behind the arc. He comes up with the steal as well. He's holding. Again, they've lost the shooter in the corner. If Cheshire have been... A little more accurate from that. You'd expect somebody like Maceo Jack to knock that one down. Maceo Jack could have been a little bit more patient there as well. There's a trail and Skyler White. Kick ball, timeout in the game. Leicester 41, Cheshire 42. We'll be back after this break.
Welcome back to Leicester, where the Riders trail the Phoenix as an offensive foul pulled off the ball. I think it's on uh, Thomas. I must admit, I was watching the ball, so I didn't quite see it. Yeah, there's a lot of off-ball action there, and I think of the, the push-off was just a little bit too aggressive for the referee's liking. Here's White again. And we've got McKenzie on him this time. He might try and back down. They've switched it up to Bridges. Creates room. Skylar White. Well, he's already made four three-pointers in his previous spell in the BBL. Five was his most in a game. He's well on pace to beat that. Bridges has it knocked loose. Can't come back up with it. Right, slips through his hands, and that'll be a Leicester ball. Well, and this is typical of early season basketball. You'll see turnovers, guys a little bit looser with the ball as well, just because of the lack of team chemistry. Well, there's just a little bit of uh, chatter going on. Just getting to know each other, guys new to the league. Just, <laughs> where did you go to college? What did you? <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a professional lip reader, but I saw some more aggressive words yeah, in there, Dan. Perhaps the referees weren't just having a chat to see whether it's worth any punishment. <laughs> well, I think. There's a double unsportsmanlike foul being called for that uh, little exchange between uh, White and Bridges. It's the first foul on uh, both of them. There's Holmes for three, back iron. Holding. Trying to use his size off the mark, and he knocks the ball out of bounds. It'll be a Leicester possession. A little bit scrappy play there. This is what happened at the other end of the floor. You can see there's just a little bit of tete-a-tete, uh, -tete, tete, I think they call it. That was a lot of head rubbing going on there as was well. A bit of, yeah. Both got the punishment for it. And of course, the unsportsman like puts you at risk of leaving the game early. Another one or a technical. There's an offensive foul, I think, on Thomas for setting the screen. It is. And he's asking for an explanation, but it's gone against him again. Let's see this. So he's at the top of the key, Hake. He's just yeah, sort of... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good call. It it's is a, a good call. It's a frustrating call for the Leicester Warriors, but it's a good one. Kate Unsworth on the ball. She's been getting her pre-season workouts. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's ready to go. Experience as well. And uh, I think what I would put that down to is a rookie foul. Just not quite uh, adjusted to the rules uh, of FIBA basketball. Because, I mean, it's essentially the same foul that you got called for a couple of minutes ago, so you've got to learn the lesson. Setting screens is a disciplined art, Dan. Oh, it is. It's an underrated skill. Yeah. Nick's leading here by one. Late in the shot clock. And a beautiful move in the key from Stevens. That really is. Excellent spin, he gets so much space there. Pinson, bullying his way to the basket. A little bit short though, Jack with the rebound. Jack, they went under the screen. Dangerous thing to do with Maceo Jack. And again, Leicester cannot secure the ball. And that's double figure offensive rebounds for the Cheshire Phoenix. And this time they get 
two more second chance points, 14 second chance points for Cheshire. And with two minutes to go in the first half, Rob Padanostro has to call a timeout here to try and uh, right the ship ahead of the uh, interval break. Well, right now on the British Basketball League, YouTube channel is half time in Bristol, 39 25. The score Bristol leading Plymouth. You could double box that and watch two games at once. That's what me and Am would be doing tomorrow. <laughs> we'll both be watching Surrey Scorchers, the champions in town. Justin Robinson against the London Lions, 450 uh, for that one. And then Sunday, our first look at the Manchester Giants and their new head coach. And the Caledonia Gladiators ahead of their European campaign. And don't forget, next Thursday night, we'll see the Scottish side again. They're down in the capital. London Lions hosting that one. 7.30 on Sky Sports. Make sure you tune in for that one. Teams making their way back out onto court. Less the ball from the end after that offensive rebound and put back. Stretch the next lead to five. Bowman running the baseline, that's where they go. But the reach in and slap away from Holden gets the Knicks the ball back. And Jack just going right to the basket again. They missed the layup. Leicester with the chance to run. The pass went backwards, and that meant they were always chasing it. With Bowman running in the open floor, he needs to get that ball quicker. Yeah, missed opportunity there for the Riders because had Bowman called that one, you know what's next? It's an electrifying fast point, a uh, fast break dunk. Easy two points. But really, I really like the. The Phoenix activity on the defensive end. How many times have we seen them with their hands in in the passing lanes or swiping down at the ball, recovering the ball from the Riders' offense? Well, they've got seven steals already in the game. They'll make that eight. And well, there's going to be an offensive foul as Holmes hits the deck. I was backing him down. I hate that call. I hate that call. I mean, great <laughs> job for Jalen Holmes, who sold it to the referees, but that's not an offensive foul for me. Right. We all have the art of the low post, just bullying your man out of the out of the way. You'd have just stepped over him there and dunked it, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would indeed. <laughs> well, I would have been running back with a frown on my face if the referee caught an offensive foul on me there as well. And Rye will get a break here as we Head into the latter minute of the second quarter. Here comes Pinson for Leicester. Still trailing by five. Around the double screen at the top. Holmes, oh, all the way to the basket. Not quite the finish. He clutches his head because he's frustrated that he's not going to the line for one free throw here. For as high scoring as this game has been, there's been so many of these mm. that have been left out there. In addition to the Cheshire Phoenix free throws that they haven't converted, two for nine, so that's another seven points there, remember that. They I, could have banked. I feel like watching this game, Cheshire up five, maybe three if both of these go in. Can't be more than four now, but uh, they'll go into the locker room possibly with a bit of a lead, thinking, how are we not double figures up here? Are all the offensive rebounds, the turnovers they've forced, the open threes they've had, the getting to the basket, and all the sorts of things that, if you come to Leicester to win, you kind of need to yes. make them. But I hope it doesn't come back to haunt them later in the game. We saw that last night in the Newcastle Eagles, Sheffield Sharks fixtures. You know, Sheffield Sharks played a really good first 20 minutes. And they left a lot of points out there that they should have converted, but they didn't, and Newcastle Eagles end up victorious. Again, another open three. This one is knocked down. Kristen again, his second of the game. He's got 14 points off the bench in about six and a half minutes. He has been excellent. 
efficiency has been off the charts. Holmes has room, lines up the three. Did he get caught? He went to the deck asking for a foul. Referee says flop warning coming. McKenzie knocks it loose. Bridges comes up with it. Leicester with numbers here. Drop back to Bridges. I thought they were going to mess up a four on one, but they do get two points at the end of it. It's good awareness there from Pinson, the point guard, who knew that his 6'11 centre was trailing. And Braylon Bridges didn't want to mess around with trying to entertain the highlight. He just needed the points. And they'll safe layup gets it to go. Well, there's basically one offense left here. Just under 24 seconds. Ben Thomas has a timeout to use, so he will use it to draw up a play and try and get the uh, half century up on the board. Here's another look at that last call. Whether there was some contact on the hand there, you can see. Referee Unsworth waving the flop warning sign to feel that he went down a bit easy. I think I think it might have been both of those things, if I'm honest with you. Good space in here on the transition. And well, it's a three, four on one there, and easy conversion there of Raylian Bridges. Ben Thomas drawing up a play, but to be honest with you, they don't, the way the first half has gone, it doesn't have to be too complex. Penetrate kick, it's in a wide open corner three. And that will be one of the most disappointing things, I think, for coach Pat Nostro, is that the ease that this Phoenix offense has been able to break down the defense. It's a simple pass, it's not like a, you know, several rotations where they're wearing down the defense. It's a, and, and where the Phoenix has done a really good job on so far as well in this half is that flare screen. The, the, the screen at the top there set by Scarlett White and he's flaring which is causing havoc for the Leicester Riders defense. Let's see what Ben Thomas has come up with in that timeout. Leicester pressuring, he's got to get it in. Well, they lost a little bit of time, but they had plenty to work with. Here's White, Kristen, 14 points from seven shots in this first half. Here's White, head fake, creates room, leaves it short. Another offensive rebound and scored from Maceo Jack right on the buzzer to cap an excellent first half for the Cheshire Phoenix. 51 points on the board, they lead by seven. Wow, an excellent athletic play that has secured the offensive rebound. It's an off-balance circus shot, but he gets it to go. We'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back to Leicester, where the hometown riders trail, trail the Cheshire Phoenix by seven here, 44 points to 51. And if we have a look at the statistics, I think there's a few things that will leap out and show us why. First of all, the 12 turnovers right at the bottom by the riders, only six by the Knicks. The rebounding kind of masks the fact that they've got 11 offensive rebounds, Cheshire, which they've turned into 16 second chance points. It's been great activity from the Cheshire Phoenix and they've been making the Leicester Riders feel uncomfortable as well on our offensive end, getting their hands in the in the cookie jar and stealing the basketball away. But it's been that three point shooting. Look at the volume there. 22 shots, they, three point shots they've had in the first half, a conversion of 40%. It's it, looking it pretty healthy. Been it, it could, could have I mean, been they've, better. They've made nine. It could have been better for them. They've, they've, they've actually had some open three point looks that they haven't knocked down and, and really you feel like they'll be happy up seven, but it could easily be double figures here for the Knicks. And I think that's good news for the Phoenix. I think you, you haven't played a perfect half and you find yourself with a heavy, uh, a healthy uh, seven point lead and things could have been better. Let's have a look at the action from the first half here at the Morningside Arena. And really the tale uh, of the uh, early stages with Skylar White gunning from three, Lester turning it over a little bit and all the momentum early on with the Knicks. And this too, Full court pressure there for two guards. The should have made that shot, but look, if they don't give up on the play, they continue to put the pressure hold on the riders there in the full court and convert. It was kind of a microcosm of the game because Leicester then turned the ball over after that score. And as I say, the Knicks really will be pleased with the uh, quality of shots that they've got. Open threes to the basket. Those are the high percentage shots that you want. Exactly, and what I really like at the moment, they, there's a collective nature about them. And Samuel Adowu, excellent off the bench. Nine points for him, an injection of energy and optimism for him. Now, you've been in the locker rooms here at the Morningside Arena uh, as much as you can. Ha take us inside. What will Rob Paternostro be saying now? I will 100% not be able to translate the vocabulary that we'll be using right now. It'll be animated. I think he'll be upset because there's been multiple breakdowns just like this. Way too long to get out to shooter there. The defense is being sucked in way too much in the key, which is leaving three-point shots and shooters open on the perimeter. Well, it is the worst of all worlds, but this is the thing that drives him nuts more than anything else. These turnovers, because of that, it leads to easy, fast break points. And it's the positive nature of Cheshire Phoenix just, again, making the riders uncomfortable, stealing the basketball. Well, they've got to find some way, Leicester, of getting back in to their rhythm. They certainly looked a little out of sorts here. Certainly, Skylar White has That's a confident shot, isn't it? Yeah. Four three-pointers already. Well, this is the first game for Leicester and Cheshire, but we had the first game of the British Basketball League season last night. That was Newcastle against Sheffield. We've got highlights of that and exclusive con content from the British Basketball League. Beautiful head fake up and number with a spin and one for the Eagles. Ricky McGill lightning quick on the baseline. McGill, beautiful finish. Passing lane disrupted and another steal this time for the Sharks. Highlight real time and a throwdown. Two point game now as Sheffield. Trying to get their offense rolling. Do they get it from the outside? Yes, they do. And here come the Eagles looking to capitalize on this. Beautiful, leave it for him, and he will deliver. Rockstar rim, Taj Green, what we know him for, the highlights. Pipkins now. He finds space, push off, and the foul. Boy, oh boy. Shot clock now down to five. Drive inside out. Retino left open for the three. Buries it. Bang. Tell you what, this is not something you want to do in the backcourt. His dribble too much. This team lives off this. And a nice job of defense. Beautiful drive to the lane and one. Ricky McGill, wow. Miguel, nice finish at the glass. 
Larry Austin now pushing the pace inside. Deep range three. Count it. Will Neba. Oh, right down the lane. Defense comes. Not soon enough. Terrell Allen with a huge bucket for the visiting Sharks. Shot clock still at nine. Beautiful alley-oop, and there you go. First highlight of the night as Taj Green delivers. My, oh my, look at this. Boom. Sheffield Sharks falling apart. British Basketball League is back, and it's the Newcastle Eagles that come from behind and get the victory. Hey, it's Taj Green here at Crep City, Newcastle. Let's go shop and see what I find, but it's gonna be on Newcastle Eagles budget. I always wanted to hoop in these, but I feel like that'd be too heavy for me. There's always been a connection with basketballs and sneakers. I feel like, you know, it started with Jordan, and I feel like now just with the, the fashion and shoes, and it's just, it's worldwide. Jordan 10 is probably my favorite shoe. I had owned the, uh, the NYC's, the NYC's 10s, and I hooped them, I was like, ooh, yeah, they, I like them. Or, or these, these right here. At first, I didn't want to come overseas. Being away from family, I'm a mama's boy, so that was the biggest thing, being away from my mom. Um, but it was a good journey. I'm blessed to be able to, you know, to say I'm a professional basketball player. Coming to the UK, really, like, 11 o'clock, they have four outfits. And I'm like, I'm walking around sweatpants, hoodie, and I'm like, I don't feel right, so I gotta, you know, kind of like draw in to the culture. Like everybody going outfits early in the morning. I got these at home right now. The whole life general about Newcastle is, is good and it's smaller. It reminds me back of uh, back at home. How much y'all shirt? Sixty? Oh, all of them? I like this one too. And all of them sixty. Yeah, the other place tried to get me. To me, it's drip. Uh, our, our terminology of drip is, you know, what you put on, on the court, off the court. When I don't have a decision, I go any, many, many, most. Yeah. Ah, I always go with the opposite, though. Yeah. Let me get this large one. I just want this one. Don't let nobody get these, please. No, like, the best player to ever touch a basketball. <laughs> Behind me. I'll raise him more. There you go. Over, over this? This is a lit league. Uh, we have a lot of good players, a lot of great talent. I just feel like it's a league that a lot of people sleep on and don't realize the talent that we actually have. This, this is gonna describe my whole team in one. Teamwork. If you think about it, we got a team full of players. They're real fast, athletic. This is Darius Defoe, man. Here about business. We have a good coach that's gonna lead us in the right way. Um, we real exciting. This will be JJ. I look to be serious. Yeah, JJ, JJ tough. Like JJ here, floor general. If I could pick a shoe from this table, pandas, you know, you can wear those with anything. Like I can fit in with, with anything. I just feel good, you know, being on the court because I'm still blessed to be able to play. And it's only year two, so I feel like it's more years to come.
welcome back to the Morningside Arena where the Cheshire Phoenix lead the Leicester Riders 51 points to 44 and uh, as good a half as it was for Ben Thomas and his team he'll know that they need to be even better in the second half because they will expect a response from Leicester here. Yeah I think a wave from the Leicester Riders is going to come early so it's going to be can Cheshire Phoenix withstand that adversity uh, and the pressure that the Riders are about to put on them in the third quarter. Well, Cheshire won the last meeting, the last game of last season. Wasn't really much riding on it. Leicester had won the previous nine uh, between these two teams. Rob Padanostra, 19 and 6 all time, 11 and 2 all time against Ben Thomas here at the Morningside Arena. But Ben trying to get win number three here on the board. Here's McKenzie into the key, kicks it out. Thomas for three, back iron. He was a little behind Stevens. I'm not sure he was expecting it, but he's able to keep possession. Oh, they lost Rye underneath. Scrambling around. And White again with the head fake resets. And Skylar White with his fifth three pointer of the game. That's only the fourth time. He's done that in his BBL career. Excellent offense from the Phoenix there. See the ball movement inside, outside. It found its way to Scarlet White. A pump fix so effective. Oh. McKenzie has done that multiple times in his British Basketball League career. No doubt about that. His right spinning baseline and in off the glass. Another good decision. The play before Roy passed the ball out of the post. This time takes it straight to the rim. Nice finish. Knicks leading by 10 here early in the third quarter. White gets his hands on the pass and deflects it away. Right, slowing it down. That will count. He'll go to the line for a bonus. That's an incredible move. That's using your smarts. It's not using your athleticism. It's not using your length. It's the ability to have body control. Feel the contact. And you see him sort of slow it down for a relatively easy finish there. Nice play, Aaron Rye. Still they struggle from the foul line. 10 attempts, just two made. That'll be another thing. You're up 12 and you've actually missed eight free throws. Lowell getting all the way to the rim. Nice move there from TJ Lowell. They're going to need him to do a lot more of that. Right, again, trying to find some room along the baseline. Forced back to the middle, but he's able to convert. <laughs> Just my move there and his ability of to be able to use his body and the court awareness to know where the basket is. Nice finish. Right, you can see the volume of points in the paint for the Knicks. And there's more good hands. They're very active defensively. And the transition three is short, but a long rebound comes back out to right. Again, he's trying to find some room. And finally left to get their hands on the ball through Thomas. Holmes running into trouble, somehow got that to go. <laughs> Jared Holmes, he looks like he's out of control, but I, I think he likes playing that type of basketball where it's sort of downhill and fast hitting towards the rim. Nice play. Here's White again. Not this time. Law with the rebound. He still had a lot of time, didn't he, to shoot that basketball. That's a good pass. Law with the assist and too much needed points for Leicester. Dobu has been very efficient. That's why he started the second half. Four of four for 11 points. He did excellent too. That he, rim, he, he ran to the rim, which means he got down the floor really quickly. And if you find those blind spots in the baseline, you can get open just like he did on that last play. Jack off the mark. And again, they're on the offensive glass. Rideau just ripping it away from Law. Leicester asking for a foul. Or maybe even a jump ball as well, but it's uh, gone the other way. Well, he was a previous all-defensive player of the year for a reason. 
Look at that. It was anticipated. It's a good steal. It's clean. This is the one area of his game that's let him down today is his shooting. He's 0 for 4 up until that shot. And he hasn't been able to knock down a free throw either. So nice. if you add all his uh, shots up, including his free throws, he's 0 for 7. He's yet to get a point on the board. And that continues. Mm. Wow. It's not often you see that. Mm. 0 for 4 from the floor, 0 for 4 from the free throw line. Look at all those misses, 16%. They could be way away. That's an offensive foul, another illegal screen. Well, those illegal screens, of course, count as turnovers. So that'll be turnover number 15 now for the Leicester Riders. Key point Rob Patton made before the game, we must look after the basketball. His team are not doing that right now. Just a little wide in the stance and chasing it. It's the guard's job to run him into the screen. Rido now for three, finally he's on the board. Well, that's mental toughness, isn't it? You're 0 for 4 from the field, you're 0 for 4 from the free throw line, but you have the confidence to step up and shoot a three. Then we're to the basket, he's fouled on the way before the block. Skylar White, the offender. And they've distributed the fouls pretty well, Cheshire. He's got two, nobody's got more than that. Oh, I thought Dan Samuel Dews had such a positive impact off the bench. 11 points personal for him. But he's perfect from the floor. Oh. Four for four from the field. This is the first free throw, though. This is it by some distance. He's probably would have got a few more minutes were it not for the three fouls he's got. Oh. The second one is clean. Oh. And Leicester still double figures behind here. We haven't quite seen the onslaught we were expecting in this third quarter. Here's White with the head fake, but this time it's deflected away. It's not for Leicester player last, so it'll stay with the Phoenix. Fans trying to get behind the defense and it almost works out. It's going to be a Cheshire ball. They're down to five on the shot clock, though. Sorry, I thought I saw two. My bad. Two. Two. It was obvious. My bad. Mark two. Hey, hey, hey. Defense. Right to inbound. Uh, catch and shoot from White, tough shot. But another offensive rebound, this time it's Meteo Jack. Oh, air ball. Finally, Leicester come up with a defensive rebound. Look at that, 13 offensive rebounds for the visitors. McKenzie to the basket, everything but the finish, he'll shoot two. Well, that's another thing as well that gives a player that, you know, additional green light per se, is if you miss the shot, you know you've got Active teammates looking to crash the boards on that occasion. Really difficult, highly contested shot there from Skylar White. But I think a part of him thinks if it doesn't go in, I know my teammates have got my back on the offensive glass. It didn't convert on that occasion, but it does have an effect. Well, I think the coach, judging by Ben's body language, they had a slightly different view of that shot to you, and <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie makes both from the line. Of course he does. Still an eight-point Cheshire lead. Finding his way around the high screen is Stevens off the mark. Is it another offensive rebound? Yes, it is. And squeezed home by Rye. Wow, Aaron Rye just. Finds those gaps, finds those space in the key. 
15 points personal for him now. Holden runs down a blind alley, and Cheshire yeah. rip it away. Jack coming back, and there's going to be a foul called against Thomas here. 4.35 to go in the third quarter. Cheshire with a double-figure lead here. Plenty of work for Rob Paternostro to do. We've got a timeout, so we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena, where Maceo Jack is on the free throw line. Looking to stretch the lead to 12. And of course, one of the few returning players on court from last year, and didn't join till later in the season last year, but showed enough promise to warrant a re-signing this season. Gave him a little lift, didn't he? Just when they needed it in the middle of the year. Oh, the lift being the key word, he was had some electrifying high above the, the rim highlights. Inside to Bridges, who can't convert. And there is a late whistle, but I think it's the right call there, as the foul is on uh, Shogar. And Riders have not done a good enough job of that this evening, and that's utilising their 6 foot 11 centre inside. Someone like Braylon Bridges can get you high percentage shots in and around the rim. And they haven't really went to him. He's three for three from the field. Six points. Perfect from the floor. And besides those early baskets, they haven't utilized him down low. Well, I wonder if it's maybe the issue at the other end of the floor, because he is minus 11 in the, uh, in the plus minus. And we haven't really seen much of Mo Walker today either. So it's almost like they've had to small ball it. And why they had to do that, the small ball, is because they struggled to guard Skylar White on the perimeter. Ordinarily, big men aren't used to guarding three-point shooters on the perimeter. It could be a nightmare at times. I remember I was never a fan of it either. But that's why the big guys of the Leicester Riders haven't been able to play more minutes because of Skylar White's outside shooting ability. Shot clock getting low here. It needs to go up. Stevens has it. He's got a shoe. Did he get it off in time? Just... Again, the Knicks going after the offensive rebound. Again, they come up with it. Wow. Hunting like packs. And that's going to go out of bounds for a Leicester possession. But they've got 16 offensive rebounds. They've got 18 second chance points. Just Leicester can't go. And that's another sort of issue with the lineups. They just can't get a rebound. Cheshire, though, you have to credit. I mean, it takes effort, really. Offensive rebound is about desire as much as anything else. Oh, well, they're, they're winning that battle so far today. Excellent okay. energy. Look at this. Hands in the, nothing's easy for the Leicester Riders. Everything is made difficult. Bowman 
misses the three. And Glenn Thomas is wanting a technical for a flop, but he'd be happy with the three instead for Maceo Jack. Wow, the confidence too to step up and knock that down in transition. Well, that's one time where the, ref the uh, coach is happy that the referee didn't listen to him, because if they'd given a technical, he wouldn't have hit the three in transition instead. See, just not quite square on there. <laughs> Protests to the call there from Holden. I mean, what's great about Coach Ben Thomas as well? We've seen some remarkable pictures from back in the day. Him as a young boy, as a fan, sitting in the crowd watching his beloved team play. And not only does he grow up to be head coach, he's brought silverware back to Cheshire Phoenix and BBO Cup and BBO Trophy. Oh, with three much-needed points for Leicester. But they've got to find some way of stopping Cheshire as well, because three minutes to go in the third, they've given up 70. And this is part of the problem. They can't get a rebound. Cheshire getting second and third chance opportunities all over the shop, and, well, they can't take advantage of it. Goodness me, another layup loan. They do, they do the hard part, which is securing the offensive rebound. They just can't finish. Bowman into the key, kicked out to Pinson, he strings a three. Big play there, and that's a five-point swing because you've got the missed layup there, minus two, and then the three-point play from Xavier Pinson knocks it down to reduce the gap to seven. Oh, that's a tremendous finish, Ruth. Traffic there from Kristen. Wow, Kristen. That'll be one of the harder plays you'll see this evening as well. And Kristen, what a game he's having. Gambling State Tigers graduate rookie season for him. He was player of his conference last year, so he's a player coming into the British Basketball League high on confidence. And boy, are we seeing this right now. 14 points on debut. Uh, it's going to be a foul on him. Well, they're over the limit, Cheshire. So it'll be two free throws for TJ Lowell. He's made three trips to the line. One for two, one for two, two for two. Off the mark. Well, Rob Padanostro has won 13 times on opening night. He's only lost twice in his coaching career in the first game of the season, but he's staring down the barrel of defeat number three here. There's still a long way to go in this one. Jack. Holden drops it back. Needs to go up. Again, late shot clock. Doesn't go. Bowman able to secure the rebound. Pinson looking at the pick and roll. Goes back to Bowman. Bowman steps into the three. And he knocks it down. Blake Bowman. Aggressive nature, hand in the face, knocks it down. Certainly Leicester have got it down to five. Jack down to right again, they're deep in the shot clock here, Cheshire. Right gets his man in the air, uses all 24, but can't get the points. Everything but the finish, wasn't it? Good control, patient move, couldn't convert. Riders have an opportunity here. Pinson snaking his way in and 
under all sorts of pressure, cuts it to a three-point game. It was 10 a blink of an eye ago. They've obliterated that deficit, haven't they? Right. They can just about run this down. Cheshire shot clock is on, but they should still get the final shot of the quarter. Oh, maybe not now, because the foul is called, but he passed it away, so it's uh, on the floor foul. It's one of those ones where as soon as you hear the whistle, you want to just throw it up. Over the limit, so he gets his two free throws anyway. It's just creating something from nothing as well, Aaron Roy. I mean, look at that stat line this evening so far, 15 points, five rebounds, six assists, and he's just such a, an intelligent basketball player. Stems from his academics, of yeah. course. Dartmouth. Studied at Dartmouth, it's Ivy League school, the most prestigious of academic institutions in the United States of America. Studied neuroscience as well. So it wasn't one of those easy subjects, Dan. It wasn't your major, was it? It was not. No. <laughs> Here's Pinson. Trying to get one last score for Leicester, forcing his way to the basket and gets it away and in off the buzzer. And Leicester trying to haul themselves back into this game. End of three, it's still the Knicks on top. 71-74 will have the fourth quarter after this. Welcome back to the Morningside Arena. Cheshire with possession here at the start of the fourth quarter. They lead by three, but that was 13 with three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Leicester with a 14-4 finish to regain some momentum, but can they get over the hump or will the Knicks upset them on the road on opening day? A battle in the low post is going to go with a foul against uh, Pinson. Fouling Holden and well, Leicester. They'll need a, a, a strong finish here, Ant, if they're going to get this one over the line. I think so, and if they carry on as they did at the end of that third quarter, I think they're going to be okay. 27 points they put on the board there in that third. But we've seen Cheshire Phoenix respond and let's see how they start this fourth quarter. Well, here's Wright. He's been the main man for responding, and Holmes getting in the way of that pass to deflect it away. We were wondering how Rye would adjust in the step from NBL to the British Basketball League. 17 points, five rebounds, six assists. How's that for a debut? There's going to be a foul on the rebound 
for a little push from Lowell. And you can hear what the home fans think about it. Well, the Phoenix have been that devastating on crashing the boards. You know, riders are reduced to having to foul. Just a, I think a little nudge yeah. in the back. It was enough. to go to the bench with foul trouble. <laughs> oh, great defense. Give me that. Oh, but it's flapped away illegally by Rideau. Bridges stole the ball and then almost lost it back. <laughs> He's got such strong hands, isn't he? Oh, steals the ball back. I don't think it was oh, a foul I'm either. Not sure, from that angle. I think it was clean and. Oh, Riders got away with one there. And I think when you're a former All Defensive Player of the Year, the referee's got to give you the benefit of the doubt because you're getting that right more often than you're getting it wrong. Referees in the scout report as well. They should be. We have to. <laughs> Here's Pinson into the free throw line. His pass is deflected and stolen by Holden. Oh, did he catch him there? In the eye. Wow. Some quick fouls here. We haven't played a minute into this fourth quarter, and Riders will be the third foul. Remember, five fouls gets you to the penalty, meaning all fouls thereafter. Cheshire Phoenix will. Go to the free throw line, which might be yeah, a good thing for tactic. the Leicester Riders. They're six of 16 from the foul line. Maybe <laughs> just send them there. Ordinarily, it's not a good thing. <laughs> but today, Cheshire Phoenix have had their absolute woes from the free throw line. Hacker Shack might be, uh, might be enforced here today. A deliberate foul. So Chester Phoenix shoot free throws. Well, room for Jack, and that's like a free throw to him. A wide open three. Maceo Jack. Well, of course, he's got basketball flowing through the veins. His mum, Felicia Lejet Jack, is the head coach of Syracuse Orange women's team. Down low to Bridges, spinning along the baseline with a little baby hook off the mark. Good move, and that's a shot that Bridges will want back. Little short, there's almost another offensive rebound. Oh, they're going to give it to him. I thought that came off right in real time. Well, he just winked to his teammates, so that might suggest you're right, Dan, but you cannot fault the energy of the Phoenix, who are out performing the Riders in that category. 71-77 timeout called by Rob Padanostro there. Uh, looking good in Bristol for the Flyers, leading comfortably against uh, Plymouth. That game's on the British Basketball League YouTube right now. And don't forget, coming up uh, tomorrow, the champions get the defense of their crown underway. They head to Surrey to take on their former point guard. Well, two former point guards, because technically uh, Lloyd Gardner played for London years ago as well. And uh, Justin Robinson, of course, now the Scorchers, and then Manchester Giants and Caledonia Gladiators do battle on Sunday evening. And then next week, we're in the capital to see the Lions and the Gladiators head to head on Sky Sports next Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Well, Rob Padanostro with work to do with his team here and you've been in those uh, huddles what would he have been saying to his uh, team there well he's surprisingly composed you know it, it's usually the dead time where he loses <laughs> he loses his will to live the timeouts and he's really composed and he'll be working on looking at solutions how to get his team firing blocked by bridges but must have caught a bit of arm in that because that's going to be two free throws and that's, these are the plays too that separate you. If you can capitalize on the free throw line, 
You just want to, if you're Cheshire Phoenix, you do not care in the slightest if this is an ugly game for the next eight minutes and 16 seconds. You just got to make sure you're ticking away at that scoreboard while the clock is ticking away. Well, Stevens hasn't been to the free throw line yet today. So he's not bothered about the rest of his team missing <laughs> free not. throws. <laughs> Unfazed. He could be a interesting piece of the puzzle for them this year. He's a long athletic guard who likes to shoot the three ball. Holmes penetrates, kicks out to Washington. Vincent backs out. Little hesitation, then he gets oh. all the way to the basket, but can't finish. Wow, what a move. The resistance of the defense was enough. Jack is open again, and Jack hits another three. Macy, oh, Jack. Well, and that's the thing, when you're a returning player, sometimes you come back a brand new man, higher on confidence. 15 points personal for Jack. He couldn't quite squeeze that in, but he is fouled, so... Leicester having trailed by 13, got it down to three, and now they're in a double-figure hole again. And we said earlier, Cheshire, every time Leicester have made a run at them, they've had some sort of response. This time it's Macy O'Jack. And that's good signs for coach Ben Thomas because he's got a group that have resilience. You know, it's really easy making shots when everyone's doing it, you know, the high fives and life is easy, but when a team comes back and gives you their best, those are the teams that can withstand those periods of adversity. Well, it's Ben Thomas actually made his coaching debut in this building against Leicester in uh, February 2017. Took over the coaching mid-season trophy semi-final first leg away at Leicester. Not exactly the way you want to make your debut. <laughs> they were beaten by 20 on the night. But he's uh, on his way to a Rare win here. He's only had a couple of them at Leicester, but he's seven and a half minutes away from the third. Here's Holden. Gets it back. Long offense is order of the day here for the Knicks as they try and take some time out of the game. Right now, spinning in. It's a hell ball. That was pretty quick for a hold ball. Usually the guys are tied up for a bit of that. Is, the yeah. did have their hands on it for a while there. Not a good call from the ref. It's a Leicester possession arrow. So they get a stop they needed. Oh, Kenzie is pushed to the ground. Well, in uh, close proximity, and I think it's his number that Kate Unsworth is going to show to the table. Hello, White. Back into the game for the Phoenix. Into Bowman. Holmes straight down Main Street for the finger roll. Excellent play there from Jaron Holmes. Route one. Nice left hand finish. A little rock and roll, and the slap from McKenzie is not enough to stop Holden as he finishes and goes to the line for a bonus. Cam Holden with a response. He's got long limbs there, and you can see the strength after the swipe down from Kimball McKenzie. And he looked like he enjoyed that one. Certainly did. Well, Leslie, you were talking about it earlier in the bonus now. So from here on out, Cheshire going to the free throw line for any foul committed by Leicester defensively. 15 points and eight rebounds for Jack. I'm not sure why nobody's lined up. Technical foul. Maceo Jack shot the free throw. Oh, right. Cam I missed that. Things going from 
bad to a little bit worse from the Leicester Riders, and they've got six minutes and 50 seconds to figure it out. The Cheshire Phoenix will be getting the, a road win in the Morningside Arena. Kenzie picking up two fouls on that play. Pinson. Looking to get along the baseline, throws it out the back door. Shot clock about to expire, and it's a 24 second violation against the Riders. Pinson didn't give his teammate much to do there. Now, a bit of a stagnant offense there from the Riders, but equally, it's the, the resistance, the activity of the Cheshire Phoenix, which are bothering the Riders. Look at his strength. Gets Bowman up in the air, and he'll shoot too. <laughs> he always creates, doesn't he? Always looking to create something from nothing. Again, the use of the body gets inside. Two former NBL Division One players going out of there, and Blake Bowman and Aaron Rye, both now in the big leagues. Well, the thing that's really pleasing, I think, for Ben Thomas, is Rye's their leading scorer now with 18, but he's only got a basket more than Jack, than White, and then Christian. He's had offense from different places. Yeah, and, you know, sneakily as well, Cam Holden, seven points and 11 assists. Excellent contribution from him. Seven rebounds as well. He's not a million miles away from a triple-double. He's had a bit of foul trouble. But uh, he's been effective when he's been on court, but that one doesn't go. That's his first miss from the uh, floor today. He's missed a couple of free throws, but had not missed a field goal. Right along the baseline. Oh, and he somehow found some room. <laughs> it's remarkable. He tiptoes on the baseline, then has the brute strength to gather himself and go up through the defender. High off the glass, 15-point game. Pinson in strong, it's an offensive foul, and everything going Cheshire's way. Their fans are off the benches of their loving life. Wow. Pinson just trying to make some number. You can see him go up through the defender. That's excellent defense. Straight up. Takes one to the chin. And he looks like he enjoyed that too. Well, time out. Called here. 74 to 89. Cheshire lead. They've really got uh, the hold on this game. I'm sure too many people would have picked the Knicks coming into this game, given Leicester's history, but if they had picked the Knicks, they wouldn't be saying, yeah, Knicks by 15. No, they would not have done, and it's been a remarkable performance. The only criticism you could say is in the third quarter where the Leicester Riders made a, a big run at the end of that quarter, but besides from that, this Phoenix team have been excellent. And it, the scary thing is they've left points out there on the yeah. floor. You know, lots of missed layups, missed free throws, but still a dominant performance. This is a really talented team. Well, they haven't won here. Since 2019, they actually had uh, two wins in 2019. One in October and one in March. Both pretty comfortable. And they're looking pretty comfortable now. The Phoenix fans, they always can always hear them wherever you go in the British Basketball League. You'll know when the Knicks fans are in the house and they've certainly enjoyed the first 35 minutes of this game. Such a close-knit community up there, isn't it? They've been loyal for a very, very long time. Name changes. Well, they've just gone past the 10-year anniversary of the Phoenix. Wow. Rising from the Jets' ashes. And that's going to be a... No! What a finish that is from Holden! Through the contact, and he hooks it in. Cam Holden! 
a high degree of difficulty shot here. And he gets it to go. He's been the one as well. Maybe the unsung hero. At times, he's been able to respond. That's nine points for him to go along with his eight rebounds and 11 assists. Well, Skylar White in the background, a little jig down court. He enjoyed that. A made free throw to boot. We're getting close to 20 here, Cheshire. Holmes, a little hesitation, taking it at White, and the foul is called. 4.52 to go here in the fourth quarter. A lot of work for Leicester to do. They trail 74-92. We'll be back after this break. Well, welcome back to Leicester, where the riders are in a massive hole here. And, uh, well, Holden is going out of the game. I think he's got a little cut on his hand, and that might be the only way to stop him right now. He's closing in on a triple-double. He's got the points. He's got the assists. He's only two rebounds away. And this isn't a coincidence. He's only the second player in university history, Toes and Tigers, to get a triple-double. So he's in the history books there, and he might be secured himself a history book in the British Basketball League after game one. Well, both uh, both uh, free throws good for the riders, but they're going to need some stops. Larry Austin, the last Cheshire player to get a triple-double. It wasn't that long ago. It was in April. <laughs> As Amicio Jack hits another three-point shot that's his fourth of the game he has been the big thorn isn't he in the side of the Leicester Riders you got to think of all the big plays he's made after many runs from the Riders as Jaron Holmes hits a mid-range pull-up well, Cheshire gonna try and milk some clock here long offenses will give Leicester very little time to work away back into the game and to be honest with you they don't really look like doing it even if the clock was ticking slowly Stevens on the shot clock buzzer can't convert and there they are again he's just out of bounds it's Riddle again those hands he's everywhere I think players around the league are going to have to be mindful of where he is because the ball is not safe if Riddle was in the facility. Well, Holmes, a little hesitation went to the basket, and Jack fouled him, trying to prevent the dunk. Wow, that could have been a <laughs> supreme level highlight there. Jaron Holmes rises above. Maceo Jack also up there, contesting that shot.
And John Holmes, of course, one of the rookies this year. Spent his final season at Iowa State University. Some very solid numbers, 13 points a game. He averaged before that at St. Bonaventures as well. So he's always been a consistent contributor. A 15 point lead for the next. What they need to do now is keep playing. It's one of those things sometimes you see the finish line and you stop playing to win. You stop, play, stop playing to defend the lead. That's when bad things can happen. And that's a double kick. The first one was Bowman, and that's uh, a good outcome for Cheshire because the shot clock was down to four, so it sticks another 10 seconds on it. Skylar White. And Skylar White, for the first time in his British basketball league career, has made six three pointers in a game. Well, he started so aggressively, and he continues his onslaught from outside the three point line. But he's a guy coming with higher confidence as well. He played in Norway last year, averaged over 20 points a game. So, you know, he's a guy that they went to, I'm assuming, a Hofton, and he delivered. Amicio Jack trying to catch him up with his fifth three of the game. The pair of them have 11 threes. And they've shot over 50% to get there. Wow. Holmes wants a foul. Nothing doing. You can just feel the... Deflation, can't yeah. you? The Leicester Riders. You can hear the, fan, the Knicks fans. You can't hear too much else because the Riders fans, I think, are resigned to the fate here. Holden finding White. Make that seven for Skylar White. Goodness me. And it's 12 assists for Holden. Excellent find. Scooping that ball for the baseline. Bowman down the lane with the two-handed throwdown. Straight down the middle, he skies for the dunk finish. Well, that's one of them from Cheshire's point of view. It's the end of the world, you're up 20 already. Rice spinning to the basket. He's had a great game as well. It's a tough old pick. For MVP today, Ant. It is indeed, and it's a, it's a star studded performances on this Chester at uh, Cheshire Phoenix roster, excuse me. So there's a handful of players that are strong candidates for MVP. Well, Maceo Jack, five of ten for three, 22 points, eight rebounds, three assists. Rye has 21 points, six rebounds, seven assists. Holden, two rebounds short of a triple-double. Skylar White, seven threes for 22 points. You could give it to any of them, really. Well, I think it's been the the, the, the guy is, that's made the, the intelligent plays for out, and you've got a, a, a guy close second, flat with a triple-double, but it's Aaron Rye for me who has been fantastic, and I think he's made those difficult plays as well, perhaps ones that won't get accredited for pretty plays, but he's been excellent in terms of utilizing his body, getting his teammates involved, and making the big plays when it matters. He kind of plays at a slightly different pace, doesn't he? It's almost, it's almost deceptively slow, if I can say it, put it that way. He, he sort of gets you to go by or to bite on something, as you say, great use of the body. And while well, we were asking the question, what would the transition be? Easy as you like is the answer from him today. It was indeed, and maybe he's a, that you know, neuroscience background is helping him out in this uh, the grand scheme of things. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> oh, that one just uh, squeezed its way in. Cheshire were not a million miles away from tapping that one in, which would have been worth two, but they've got enough of a cushion not to worry about. Oh, that's a sloppy one. Fortunately for them, with 1.22 to go and a 22-point lead, those turnovers might not be too costly. It goes back to what you were saying, though, Dan. It's sometimes it's really difficult to maintain a level of focus when you know you've already won the game. 
Well, Cheshire want to, you know, they put in such a good performance here. They want to finish strong because they deserve to be known as a team who put in a complete performance here today. They came into the Morningside Arena, a place they do not win here very often at all. Ben Thomas has had numerous losses over the years here. But today, he will leave here, I'm sure, with a massive smile on his face and a very optimistic feeling about his team. Well, it will only be their second win in the regular season in this building. Well, that's uh, trying to get an offensive rebound, but Taylor, the tape really has been that category at the other end. Leicester have only got six offensive rebounds. Cheshire have 21. Wow. And that, together with the stats, the two big stats, second chance points, 18 points off turnovers, 24. Wow. And the, I think the surprising thing as well, when you look at this game pre-tip-off, you know, the size advantage significantly in Leicester Riders' favor. Six foot 11, Braylon Bridges. Six foot 10, Mo Walker. They've got a 6'9", Samuel Nduwu. So they've got size on this Leicester Riders team, but size has not been bigger than heart and perseverance and activity. And this guy at the line right now, Cam Holden, just one rebound away from a triple-double. Excellent game he's had. Well, into the final minute and not the opening night that the Leicester Riders fans were expecting, not the opening night they're used to seeing. As I say, Rob Padanostro 13-2 on opening day in the British Basketball League during his coaching career. That's about to drop to 13-3 as the time ticks down towards a Cheshire Phoenix victory. And I think it's the manner of the victory that is perhaps the most uh, impressive. And I'm sure everybody around the British Basketball League will be taking notice of this result from the Knicks. No, I agree. And look, I sit here next to you. I'm supposed to be a, an expert analyst. And I ranked the Leicester Riders behind the scenes. And now, look, one of those things is what? Well, don't get carried away. This is one game of basketball. And I think sometimes, as, as spectators, we, we jump to early conclusions. Sometimes it's just a bad performance and a, and a good performance from the opposition. But well, the early conclusion is the only one we got right now, but an absolutely dominant victory by the Cheshire Phoenix as time runs down and expires. They have won this game and won this game comfortably. 84 points to 110, 110 points on the board here in Leicester. What a tremendous way to start the season for Ben Thomas and the Cheshire Phoenix. It was indeed, Dan, and they did it the right way. They did it through collective team basketball, both ends of the floor, the high energy on the defensive end, but also the energy to create second chance opportunities. This guy, Aaron Rye, was fantastic at distributing the basketball and also making big plays for himself and converting. Very, very impressive victory for the Knicks. And as we said, it was done in so many different ways. White really re-announcing himself to the British Basketball League with uh, seven three-pointers, seven from 14. And it was really his shots early on that, that got the momentum going for them. Well, it changed the whole makeup of the game, didn't it? It wasn't just for himself. His pump fakes were that much more dangerous, but also the opposition had to adjust. They couldn't, Leicester Warriors couldn't play their traditional five-man because they were worried of the threat of the outside shooting from Skylar White. Well, the, the two things, the rebounding, so many offensive rebounds, 21 point, uh, 21 offensive rebounds for Cheshire and the 20 turnovers for the um, for the riders. But look, 13 steals, that's the Knicks causing those turnovers. Of course, the activity was there, the anticipation. They made the Leicester riders feel uncomfortable as well. This Cheshire Phoenix team could cause a lot of teams problems this year if they maintain that level of high intensity. And for Leicester, well, the shooting numbers don't look too bad, but it's the, it's the ancillary stats that have really hurt them in this game. And ultimately, you give up 110, you're going to lose. Yes, and look at the free throws down. 56% of they still clock 110 points on the board. Remarkable. Well, it's the 18 made uh, three pointers from the Cheshire Phoenix as well. That certainly gets the scoreboard uh, ticking over. And we saw that from really tip to buzzer. They kept on making them. It was White early on. It was Jack 
uh, uh, in the fourth quarter as well. It was coming from different places, and that was the, the positive as far as uh, Cheshire were concerned because they just, as you say, they less had that little spell late in the third, and you thought, oh, here they come, but it soon wore off when Maceo Jack hit a couple of threes in the fourth. It did when the opposite team gives you a, a run. It's, uh, you know, you've got to absorb that punch, and they did exactly that. And I think the, the most dangerous thing about the Phoenix today was that you had so many players contribute. It wasn't one guy they were riding to, to, to get them to give them points. It was, a, it was a number of different players that were ready and waiting to shoot the basketball from the perimeter, and they did it on a consistent basis. Well, the hardest job was picking the MVP. We picked one in the end. It could have been one of four. Let's hear from Aaron Rye now, who is uh, joining us courtside. First of all, a, a tremendous victory for, for the team. But let's just have a quick word about your own performance. A lot of uh, intrigue with you stepping up from NBL, but you've really hit the ground running here today. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think a big part of that is just trusting uh, the offense. And as you saw, the way we play, it's could be anybody's night, some night. Sometimes it's me, sometimes it's Sky, Mace, E, Cams, both of them, Q, down the roster. We, we got a really deep, deep team and, and we just trust in the system. And then whoever's night it is ends up, ends up uh, with, with some of the glory. But it's really, it's just total team basketball as we're trying to play. So. Well, it's pretty much everybody's night tonight, the way things went. But uh, Skylar White hitting those early threes, that really stretched the Leicester defense out. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the best shooters I've seen, and he shoots everyone with the same confidence if he's made three or, or missed the last five. So we know he's going to keep shooting that, and our, our job is just to get him the ball, and uh, he'll, he'll, let, he'll make the magic happen. And not too many teams come here and win by 20-plus points. That really sends a message out to the, to the rest of the British Basketball League that Cheshire are a team to be scared of. Yeah, no, we, we try, to, try to play every, every possession real hard defensively on the defensive end, get on transition, you know, be physical, be a team that nobody wants to play on their schedule. So I think I think we, we did that today and we're gonna keep building on that moving forward and uh, and hopefully rack up those wins, so yeah. You certainly did excellent performance. Well done for that tonight. Thanks for talking to us. Yeah, no, thank you guys very much. Take care. Well, an excellent debut for him. Let's take a look back at the story of this game and really Cheshire took a bit of control early on. They, they, they built up this lead. We thought Leicester might come out in the third quarter. It, it didn't happen. It didn't happen until the last two or three minutes of the third quarter that we started to see Leicester find some rhythm. Yeah, and it was uh, it was one of those two ones as well. In the third quarter, you thought, uh-oh, here they come. But <laughs> again, the response, the resilience, and the the, the consistency, the ability to, to, to generate offense from different sources from the, from the Cheshire Phoenix really paid dividends here today. And as you can see, you know, Pinson trying to help propel his team forward, but it didn't work. Well, and that'll be the, the worrying thing, I think, for, for Leicester. But as you say, the, the way Cheshire played defense, the way they crashed the boards, it, I mean, effort is free, if you like. It's just going after it. But these are, they have guys who not only put in the effort, but can turn it in to priceless points for them. Yeah, and, and Coach Ben Thomas commented on that before the game. He said, look, we've been doing a lot of things off the court to try and accelerate the unity of the group. And in my opinion, after this session, Sample, small sample size we've viewed, it's, it's worked. You know, you if you get guys to buy in to what we are trying to achieve, you get performances like that. Well, they were excellent. And uh, I'm sure Ben Thomas will be absolutely delighted with the way his team have uh, played here today. It really sets a marker out for the rest of the season. And I'm pleased to say we're able to talk to him. Ben, what a performance that is. It's been, uh, it was 2009 last time you won a game this big in Leicester. You've never won by this many points in this building. A tremendous performance. Yeah, I mean, look, it was a, a great team effort. I think um, I can't just pick out one performer. Um, we had a game plan, I spoke to you about it at the start, about getting our bigs on the perimeter and, and more importantly getting their bigs on the perimeter and I think we've done a great job. When we've got such big guards as well that we can post up like Aaron and Cam Holden and stuff like that, I mean it's just we have so many options that a lot of teams probably don't have in the BBL and if we can play like that every week we're going to cause a lot of people a lot of problems. 
Well, I mean, it was a tremendous team effort. You got three guys in the 20s in the starter, nearly a triple double off the bench. Incredible contribution from everybody. Yeah, look, I think um, the problem with our team is that we don't have a star, but I also think that's going to help us as well. Um, you know, a lot of people look at us and underestimate us. You know, the guy sat next to you right now has underestimated us as well. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's one of those things. But if we can play good team basketball week in, week out, we're going to cause a lot of teams a lot of issues. There's one thing I don't underestimate, Coach Ben Thomas, is you're an excellent recruiter. Year after year, you've brought in superb talent. What was it that you looked at your team from last year that you wanted to change from this year in, in, in helping you recruit the guys for this year? Well... <laughs> Funnily enough, it was it was towards the end of the season when we were sort of low on numbers, playing really sort of small ball basketball, um, and we were causing teams issues then. So we wanted to more of the same. We wanted guards that can get to the basket, guards who can score from the post, um, you know, and we wanted bigs that can shoot the ball. And I think you know we've got an abundance of those sort of players, and um, yeah, I mean that, that that that's where we got it from. Well, a great win, Ben. Enjoy the night. Thanks for talking to us. I will. Well, Thanks, Dan. Cheers, Anthony. Cheers. So he's called you out straight away at the beginning, which is what we love to see. Let's have a look at uh, the results so far in the British Basketball League this week. Newcastle Eagles getting the season underway with a seven-point win at home. Big win in the Southwest Derby for the Bristol Flyers. And tomorrow we will see the Surrey Scorchers taking on the champions, the London Lions in town. Don't forget, you can see that on our YouTube channel. And then on Sunday, Caledonia Gladiators travel to the Manchester Giants. Our first look at those two teams. It's been an incredible victory for the Cheshire Phoenix here today. They certainly deserved it. Pretty much bossed it from start to finish. Ben Thomas and his team looking absolutely excellent to claim a 24-point win in Leicester. For Ant Rowe, I'm Daniel Routledge. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.